Hey, what's up, Lightbolt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2022 horror film, suspense horror film, Smile. This is directed by Parker Finn. Is that his name? Written and directed by. Uh, stars uh, Josie Bacon, Jesse T. Usher, Kyle Gallner is in this, uh, Cal Penn is in this. <clears throat> A slew of other people are in this. This is long. It's an hour and 55 minutes, including credits. And it felt like a Blumhouse like film, like that suspense kind of build up, that like dramatic score, the camera pans, the bro. This was insane. It was scary. It was. It had a lot of jump scares, but it, it's a psychological film too. So, what's real? What's not real? Like, play tricks on you. So, I I just I I, I say this a lot recently. When you watch someone for a long time perform. You're, you grow accustomed to their mannerisms, their, the way that they interact with certain people, the way that they act. And uh, I've been watching Kyle Garner for years, 15 years, uh, perform. So it's, it's, it's wonderful watching him age and play older characters. So in this character, he plays a police officer with, uh, back, with, uh, with a backstory of uh, being uh, involved with uh, the main character that uh, Josie, uh, that, yeah, that Josie's character plays. So it's um it's it, this film is a cross between it follows and insidious but that's the best combination of what this film is and it makes so much sense when you compare the two together so you have the insidious backstory of there's this evil entity right um trying to take possession and what's the history and you know stuff but then like on the it follows aspect another evil entity doesn't really have a backstory, but it passes from one person to the next to the next after, you know, you sleep with someone, uh, after a virgin sleeps with someone, something like that, right? So there's that combined force together, and that's what Smile is. So there's this entity that we don't really have an, an, a, a full, full backstory. We get some things here and there that tries to possess someone. It's the best word for that by making them see individuals or strangers or things in their mind of these people's having a very creepy smile. Um, and it's trying to take over that person to then kill that person. So it's the person's not killing themselves. The person is being attacked by this force who's then possessing them to then kill them. But they have to be, there has to be a witness for it to then pass to the next person. It feeds on trauma. So if that if a character kills themselves in front of someone, then that entity translates to the smile something, smile ghost, whatever you want to call it. That smile entity translates now to the next person. So the main character, Rose, is a therapist. She watches one of her patients that she just meets uh, kill herself with a vase, right? Uh, the, the, patient is freaking out you know she doesn't understand why she's seeing these things she's on a doctoral program she understands that you know it can't be real so like what's going on what's happening and so things change the patient then smiles takes a vase kills herself and so rose now technically is the next victim so rose is trying to figure out why this is happening her uh ex joel who is played by kyle garner's character works the police force he is trying to help her now trying to understand why she's quote unquote losing her mind and so they find a pattern that um that patient saw someone kill themselves and someone else uh saw another someone killing themselves and so on and so forth right but then the, there was a break in the pattern where a guy saw someone kill themselves but he didn't die he didn't wind up killing himself. He wound up killing somebody. And then the witness of that murder killed themselves. And then the chain continued. So finding this information out, going back, you know, 20 cases, they said. It was 20 cases, 19 victims. So what happened? What was the break? And then finding the the uh, individual who wound up kill, uh, killing that person, visiting them in jail, getting more, that he himself did his own research, that he founded this similar chain you know starting out in brazil so like what happens right and then him freaking out realizing she has it the smile it and so 
he doesn't want it again, obviously, so then they all part ways, and she has to then confront her past where letting her mother die from a drug overdose where she could have helped, but she didn't because she was terrified of her mom, etc. Going back to the childhood home to face the demon, right? Metaphorically and physically. And it was just a whole gorgeous, fiery inferno concept of your mind makes it real, so it has to be real, right? So it's a very gorgeous conversation piece on what's real. What's real, what's not real? Is it real because our mind says it's real? Is it real because it's actually real? Like, what is real? It's just so beautifully well done. And, and the, the camera pans and the... I've said this a few times. When, when a camera does... When a cinematographer and a director come up with a, with a shot where the camera pans in a circle, right? It has to elate to the dramatic effect for the shot. There was one there was one movie, I don't remember what it was. It was it was dumb and I didn't like it. There was two characters making out on a couch and the camera panned as they're making out on the couch. And I was like, "What the hell is the purpose of that? That has no dramatic effect. That has no amp amplification of that scene. It's just two characters making out on a couch. That that's it. Why are we doing a, a camera pan of a, of a circle shot for that? That makes no sense. There was a lot of circle shots in this and it amplified the horror aspect of it, it amplified the suspense. You know, we get a camera swirl when uh, of a flashback confronting the demon of the mom, overdosing, asking Rose for help at, at 10 years old, and Rose saying no, and the mom just dies. That was a dramatic, amplified effect of that. We also get a, a, a camera pan, which was so freaking cool, where she's driving back to her family home to face the demon kind of a thing, right? And it, it pans and it stops upside down on the car driving on the highway, um, you know, through the woods. So we have the sky on the bottom and the woods on the top. And I'm like, it's in the upside down. What's real? What's not? So it's it's so well done. It's so well done. And I am so looking forward to the thousands of sequels that come from this because Kyle Gardner's character is the next viewer. So he now has the smile. But now, will he be conscious to the smile? Will he try to figure out how to break the actual, just like the 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 inmate did when they visited him? Like, what's he going to do, right? Kyle deserves main character role, and I'm so looking forward to the potential inevitable sequel, because this did very well with critics. This did very well, you know, box office-wise as well. Um, I'm looking forward to the sequel of starring Kyle. And Cal Penn in this throughout this as well was just fantastic. I'm also very curious in regards to a prequel. What happens in Brazil? I want that story. I want people speaking Portuguese, running through Brazil, figuring out what the hell's going on with all these people. You know, why is so-and-so killing themselves? And then what's the origin of this, right? Brazil is... Uh, I'm just trying to think mythology. Aztec, Maya, Inca. Mix in between Aztec and Inca. Aztec was like North America. Mayan was like Middle America. And then Central America, excuse me. And then Inca was like two-thirds down of South America, right? Historically, Aztec, Maya, Inca. Aztec, Maya, Inca. So Brazil, is, I'm just trying to think geographically as I'm staring out to the distance. Brazil was like top part of Inca, bottom part of Aztec. So it could be some kind of ancient, you know, entity from some ancient culture, whether it be the tail end of Aztec or the tail top of, tail top, or the tip top of uh, Inca. I would love to see some Incan smile god be the origin of this uh, thing that was released in a some kind of ritual they did, you know, thousands of years ago. Bro, this would be so epic. So epic. I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured out where the the origins of this smile entity comes from. It's it's some evil entity uh, from an Incan mythos. I'm not quite familiar with my Incan gods and goddesses and deities throughout matter, but I, it, that's where it is. That's where we got to go. We gotta we gotta go through some some ancient temple to see this, you know, being praised and and there was a sacrifice gone wrong and he's been 
and it's been traveling. We'll keep them. We'll keep them gender neutral. It's been traveling ever since, right, bro? That prequel would be epic, epic to have an ancient Incan horror escapade within this smile god. Oh, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. This has to happen. I I need a sequel with Kyle Garner, you know, trying to break the curse in modern times. But I need the prequel stemming in Inca. Uh, Incan culture, um, like I said, if we're if we're talking about the origin of this chain that this one particular guy found started in Brazil, so did it stay in Brazil? Did it start southern more? Did it just keep traveling up through the Americas? Did it cross the seas? I want to know. I want that prequel origin story now. Now, start writing it, Mister Writer Director guy. Start writing it right now. We we could do this, bro. This is gonna be epic. I'm so excited. On to the next review. Which <laughs> mahalo.